Hey guys, it's Vinny Lambo here, and today I have the MSI GE72QE Apache Pro. Wow, that's a pretty long name. Long story short, this is a gaming laptop that packs a 4th generation Intel i7 with an NVIDIA GTX 960M, and I got it for 30 bucks. Now yes, I do understand that you may be thinking that there is some loopholes or some sort of catch or something like that, but I am here to reassure you that there was no catch whatsoever when I bought this from my friend. As a matter of fact, he actually threw in a razor mouse with it too, but it didn't end up working. The real reason my friend was selling this laptop to me is because after getting 3 or 4 years of use of it, he did end up getting an actual desktop computer and really did not have any use for this laptop anymore. So it pretty much sat in this closet gathering dust for around 6 to 8 months. Now this is where I stepped in. I remember him complaining about all these crashes and how slow this laptop was, and I just could not put my finger on what the problem was. So I offered to take it off his hands for a cheap price, and he told me to name it. I said $30, and it was a done deal. Next thing you know, I had a fully working MSI gaming laptop with a charging cable included for 30 bucks. Now, I just want to put this out there that the charging cable that came with this laptop alone is worth around $50 to $80, so props to my boy Alan for giving me such a cheap price. Right after I got the laptop from Alan, I did some upgrades. Well, I didn't really upgrade anything like spec-wise, but what I did toss out is his 500GB 5400RPM hard drive. That thing was toast. So as soon as I chucked that, I threw in a Samsung 840 EVO 128GB SSD, and man, that thing was so much faster as soon as I put it in. Now, don't worry about the watermark in the bottom right corner, that was just the uh, wallpaper. Then, for some extra storage, I did throw in a 256GB MSATA drive, uh, the Samsung PM830. Uh, it does a really good job, it's pretty fast as well, and I'm glad that I had one lying around. So, for the specs of this MSI GE72QE Apache Pro, we have an Intel Core i7-4720HQ clocked at 2.6GHz. Then, we have an NVIDIA GTX 960M that comes with 2GB of GDDR5 VRAM. We already talked about the SSDs, and for the RAM, we have two Kingston sticks, one 4GB DDR3 module, and one 8GB DDR3 module for a total of 12GB of DDR3 1600MHz RAM. The design is really not that bad for $30 either. Even though it is a little thick and a little heavy, the nice glossy etched chassis really does look nice with the red accents, especially with the lit up MSI logo on the back. With the blue indicator lights on the front, that may not look like the best quality thing, but it really is better than some of the laptops we have today. The battery isn't the biggest, and since it's almost 5 years old now, it is showing us signs of wear. It is only lasting around 1 or 2 hours doing normal tasks, but if you do turn the cooling up to its normal speed, and you actually bring the graphics card up to its full potential, the battery is probably looking about 40-ish minutes. Thankfully enough, the laptop did come with a charging cord, so as long as we have that on us, we are good. Now, with all this new storage added onto the laptop, I was able to install a multitude of different games, including Rocket League, Minecraft, GTA 5, and more. We're going to be testing those games along with some others today. Before we get into the games though, I just want to talk about the aesthetics and the other parts of the laptop. There are actually two bottom firing speakers and one top firing speaker strip on this laptop, and it's powered by Dyn Audio, which is actually a pretty respectable audio manufacturer for laptops. For the keyboard, we do have a SteelSeries RGB backlit keyboard. It's a full-size keyboard with a numpad and everything, and if you end up installing the SteelSeries utility, you can actually fully customize the lighting and macros for this keyboard, which I think is really awesome. The only complaint though that I do have for this laptop is the trackpad. The trackpad is one of the worst trackpads I've ever used. The click is very deep, and the material of it is almost like the etched outside of the laptop, so it's kind of weird to run your finger on. The clicks are not very accurate, and there are no Windows Precision drivers. I mean, I shouldn't really be complaining about anything, since I did get it for just $30. So without any further ado, let's get right into those video game benchmarks. First off, we are going to be trying out Portal. 
even though this is a little bit of an older game, you can do some interesting portal action that can actually put a quite a bit of load on your computer. But as you can see we're actually handling this at 1080p on all max settings and we're constantly getting above 60 FPS. So there is definitely no problem here with anything like Portal, even though it is a little bit more demanding than some of the other games from this era. If you do try to play any other games from this time, it should definitely be just fine. Second off, we have Minecraft Java Edition. We are running on 1.14.4 and we don't have any mods installed at all. No Optifine, no nothing. And with 1080p on fast settings and everything else on max settings, we achieve above 100 frames most of the time. But if we do go through a big structure or a big ravine or something with a lot of mobs, we might dip down to 80 or 90 frames, but there is definitely nothing to worry about here. I did opt for a fast graphics and max settings instead of keeping on fancy and then turning on the other settings, because I do feel like we really aren't missing out on that much if we do turn to fast. However, I think if we do install Optifine in the future, we definitely would get a better frame rate overall. Next up, we are going to be playing Rocket League. Now even though this game was made a few years back, it can still be pretty demanding if you do have a lot of cars on the field and if you are playing on pretty high settings. That's exactly what we did here, and we played on 1080p, everything on quality with all the boxes checked, and we got anywhere from around 80 to 120 frames throughout the entire testing period. In the background, you may not see that much gameplay or any at all, because thanks Psyonix, you didn't put me into a game after I waited for over 5 minutes. You can rest assured though, because I have played it on this laptop many times before. The game itself is definitely still visually appealing, even though it is not on high quality, and you're still definitely getting a better Rocket League experience than all the consoles out there. Next up, we were actually supposed to be testing Grand Theft Auto V on this laptop, but the save did not sync from my original computer after this update, so I actually had to restart all over for some reason. Now, since I couldn't get any legit gameplay and I don't want to wait through all the cutscenes, I'll just put down some random gameplay from the video I made a while back. You should definitely go check that out at the end of this video. Anyways, I'll just talk about my previous experiences with GTA V on this laptop. I ran it on 1080p with a mix of high, medium, and low settings depending on what they were of course. All the anti-aliasing and that stuff is turned down to the lowest setting, texture quality is medium, shadow is low, whatever makes it the most visually appealing without too big of a graphics expense. Most of the time, we actually did get around 50 to 70 FPS, of course it depended where you were. If you were in the middle of Los Santos near all the big buildings with other cars and NPCs and everything, maybe the FPS would dip down to the low 60s and 50s, but if you were just driving around by yourself in maybe the mountain range, Mount Chiliad or whatever, the FPS could actually go up to even 75 or 80 FPS. This is what I feel like one of the best scenarios you can get with a video game. I mean, I'm running such an intensive game on not the greatest hardware and still getting such a good FPS. This is definitely not just the result of having decent enough hardware, but also the great optimization done by Rockstar. Overall, you really shouldn't have any big problems with games these days. As long as you turn the graphics settings down enough, you should be able to keep it at 1080p and have a reasonable frame rate still. Again, this is a 960M, it's not like it's some sort of ancient card. It's still very powerful for today's standards, and paired with a 4th generation i7, you should definitely get the job done for most games. So there we have it, we have our $30 gaming laptop that can do more than some $500 laptops out there can do. So like I've told my fans before if they've ever come to me with advice on what type of computer they should get, or how they should get it, I always say to definitely make sure to ask your friends or family first. You never know if they have an old computer or laptop lying around that you could definitely make into a much better rig with some TLC. One last thing I want to say is that I did have these two SSDs lying around in my house, so I did not add that to the total cost of this laptop. If you do add them to the cost now, I think they would have been an extra $100 or whatever, but that even proves my point even further that just trying to get those SSDs are three times the price of what I got this laptop for. So again, shout out to Alan for giving me such a great deal on this laptop, and that's a wrap. If you guys did enjoy this laptop review, please make sure to like and subscribe, comment down below what you would like me to do with this laptop next, and share to your friends if you think that they might buy this laptop in the future. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.